Brother Jack Key. Anything else I'm missing? I just want to get these announcements. <laughs> Yes, like you said, the off Thursdays, we would like to see the room packed like this. We probably have half this size on the other Thursdays, and uh, we encourage you to come out on those off Thursdays. I think that's it. So, without further ado, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to bring on our featured speaker. As you all know, he's been a champion wow. in this cause for a long time. And we are very fortunate to have this heavyweight master teacher before us. So please, again... Let's give this brother a warm, warm welcome Islam, Islam. to our brother Taj Tariq Bay. Islam. Thank you, good brother. Yeah. Say this for questions. Um, anyway, I wanted to go over stateless persons with everyone and to see where everyone is. Because one of the things what Brother Haru was talking about, and this is one of the things that you have to understand, you must know the distinction between unalienable rights, or what is called birth rights, and privileges. Because that's one of the most difficult areas that people have relative to their capacity to receive this information properly. And keep in mind that many people whose job it is to have given you this information has misrepresented the information, making you think it's a belief system, or making you think it's a religion, or making you think that they own it and that you can't be yourself unless you come through their clubs. Wrong concept. Uh, one of the reasons why, and this is, uh, um, this is great, one of the reasons why it's necessary to take some of the brothers and sisters to some of those lodges is because we have a tendency to do two things based on misinformation, and that is to reject masonry as negative because you're told that and the other deal is to also think that masonry belongs to the European but then at the same time it must be put in proper perspective so you can receive it correctly because to remind you that what is presented in your secret societies and this includes the Ku Klux Klan the Ku Klux Klan dragons, they have a Koran too, just like Jefferson had a Koran. So you must understand what the world, what you're taught in the general perspectives is for control purposes. And one of the best ways to control people from the high priesthood, from the dark side, is the creation of the mythical devil. And all you have to do to keep people that are in servitude under control is label anything you want, don't want them to read with the devil. And immediately you don't have to guard them with a gun anymore. They'll guard themselves and pass it down to their children. And that's pretty much what's wrong with us. <clears throat> One of the issues I want to talk about tonight is stateless persons. Now, uh, the other issue, and I didn't have time to... Uh, Pardon me, I didn't have time to um, find, because I got so much stuff. I was looking for the, um, my uh, DVD where I transferred a lot of the pictures when I made a few trips earlier in the years, because as the people began to get wakened, and when you started going down to Alexandria, Virginia, they're starting to move things around now because you're awake. So one of the things I did, I brought some of the pictures that were taken years ago, and you can just pass them around and just view them. And mo many of them were taken in uh, Alexandria, Virginia. I have another album at home uh, with some pictures in, in Philadelphia. Uh, and in due time, when you make that trip, take some pictures there too. But this is a great opportunity to put things in perspective so that you can understand why you're nationalizing. And as you see, many of the brothers and sisters are going on the, on the website and getting their proclamation papers. And the reason they're on the website because nationality is free. And that's also to protect the principles of the humanitarian movement, which has been abused by a lot of Moors trying to sell you something that belongs to you at birth. If you understand, that doesn't mean 
Keep in mind, that's RV Bay Publications he's talking about. He's not talking about some Moorish consulate. He's not talking about some Res Republic or whatever. He's not talking about some Moors Order of the Round Table CMB. He's talking about the proclamations at rvbaypublications.com. That a servant is not worthy of his hire. If he's got some other product, you know, product, it's cool. Nationality is free. You know, and because we really need to fix this thing, because as Rome is aware, and, and this is very important too, this uh, another lesson to you, particularly to some who may be just entering in to this level of degrees of knowledge. When you underestimate that European, thinking that you've got to prove to him who you are, your concept is wrong, because the world is run on more science. So if you're talking about skull and bones, in secret, they got a Moorish fez. If you're talking about all the preacher guys that marching people all around, color coalition and keeping hope alive and mountaintop guys, in secret, they got fezes too. Problem of it is, some of them have allegiances to Rome, so they don't tell you, because they get paid off by Rome to keep the Niceno Creed going on. But, it would be wise for you to really have the proper concept of this so that when you pull the writs down, and as the brother said, when you're walking before those magi, that your concepts are correct about knowing who you are. At the same time, know who they are. And these are... Keep in mind, when he says pull the writs down, he's not talking about some more order of the round table. He's not talking about some Great Seal website. He's not talking about some Moorish consulate website. When he's talking about pull down the writs, he's talking about rvbaypublications.com. This is the Taj that you hardly see anymore. Because he's pretty much fed up with all this BS. People don't want to get this knowledge. So we're going to take you back to the old ones. When he's telling you the same stuff today, but this is when he used to have his fez on. Some other points of advice for you to really, really work hard and break the habit. Break the horrible birthright abandonment habit of calling Europeans white people. Break the birthright violating habit of calling them Americans. It is, I can't emphasize it enough because you must understand in law, in the real world, when you're unplugged, they're going to try to plug you back in. And that include Negro leader guys who they assign to put you back to sleep. And keep this in mind, this is why it's important every once in a while to remind you to uh, go into Bouvier's Law Dictionary, Henry Campbell Black's Law Dictionary of Ancient and Modern Jurisprudence because much of what our people think is real is fiction. And one of the tricks that is used to maintain the social status that our people are suffering from is the introduction of connotative linguistics. And connotative linguistics is where they have the masses who don't know language thinking that black is Afrocentric and thinking that white is European when actually they're social statuses. And I'll remind you all again to look at one of the recent cases that took place uh, where a brother from Egypt tried to get some affirmative, affirmative action benefits and he sued for them because he made assignment and they rejected him. But anyway, he lost the case because on his passport, it lists him as white man. And so you must understand that it's a status. It has nothing to do with complexion. That stuff only applies here under the 14th Amendment for Christian property that belongs to European slaveholders in the Western Hemisphere registered in, in the corporate state of Delaware as property moved exactly like real estate. 
And so you have to know these things. You can't be, you don't have the option of not knowing these things because this is how the world works. And this is also why it's important redundantly every once in a while we'll go over Tropicon speech or McFadden speech or go on under over uh, original article of Amendment 13 with its 20 sections, etc., etc., and also take you to um, Oxford Dictionary and show you that black is a Middle English word and it's not ancient on the planet. Therefore, you cannot be black people. You know. However, you know when you when you're miseducated or trained that way, you respond just like rats do. Because remember, their approach. Their approach with educating our children is from the very same mechanical position they would do with training rats or animals. And knowing that we're creatures of habit, they know that if they capture the women, that the women will teach both the males and the females first, starting with the first school, which is her womb. And of course, if women don't know themselves, the real ancient culture, how she thinks, she transfers to the child while the child is gestating. And that's a true science, which is called the applied science of the number nine, which is part of the truth of world religion, which is not taught to the masses, is maintained amongst the elite. And this is another reason why the Europeans rule you, because they use your science to prepare their children to rule you with your own science. And then they give you the Niceno Constantinopolitan Creed which you call Christianity, and they have you worshiping Constantine, you think you're worshiping Jesus. And that's just simply the truth. And so they take your fez, which is your crown, they run the world, they gave you dogma, you're wondering why you can't get out of this hole, and you think that you're going to beat him with your belief in the dogma that he gave you. That's where our problem is, that way. Now, on the political scale, understand that in order for people to govern the real world, they cannot operate on lies. This is why it's necessary for politicians to do one thing and say another. Same thing with the preachers they have for overseers. And it's also why it's important for them to tell you that they're separate, when actually they're all high priests. Do you, do you understand? See, so if you believe that the preacher is working for the divine creator, you trust them. You see? However, all their ordination papers are right with the corporate state. And then they have a 501c3 agreement with the popes of Rome not to rock the boat. And then tell the people that it came from Jesus. You know, but the people believe them, so therefore the people are subject. However, in secret, all the day, all of them are Masons too. Do you understand? And so it's not, it's not that Masonry is a negative. We keep this in mind that the negative is the hiding of the truth. Because the truth is neutral, just like you say, the, like in the Bible it says, the sun shines on the good as well as the evil. What it means is that the powers of divine force is neutral. How you use it or don't use it is the issue. And the, re the other issue is that the masses are never given religion, which is a study of the divine forces of nature. This is also why the high priest took the seven books of Moses out of the heliotech, which you call now the Bible, and why they don't teach the Septuagint, which is the book from which it was translated from, and then why they don't teach you the book of the dead is the book from which that was translated from. So the high priest keep all the foundation books, including the Vedas, Torah, Tanakh, etc., and give the masses the regurgitated, redefined, translated thoroughly out of the original tongues and thoroughly out of the original cultures with a lot of things chopped out and you think it came from God. And I know that when people come things, you know, are coming from a naive position because people want to do good, they want to be good. And so as soon as someone comes at them and says, God, Allah, Jesus, Moses, Muhammad, etc., they get tears in their eyes, start giving up their lunch money. And, and, you know, so we have that difficulty getting our people out of the naive state while the high priests are raping them, helping Rome rape you some more. 
And so we have to understand that uh, the, the function of them taking the names and the nationalities from the Moors had a social political purpose. It's not just a uh, historical corruption. It has an absolute political purpose. It has a function. And that function is creating what is called, or removing from you, what is called the status, the status of Jew sanguinous. How many people know what Jew sanguinous is? All right, I'll get with that in a minute. Hook me up. Because one of the reasons that um, that I'm looking at this, because I already know that you're getting um, a lot of this in classes, and that's great that, that they're really doing some detailed study here. But these are things that you definitely need to know in order to understand your paperwork, in order to understand how to defend it. Understand Europeans, through the 14th Amendment, Forget Europeans. So, understand your paperwork means you can't get it, just go download it, fill it out, and send it in. You can't just go, Brother Jamal, I got court tomorrow. Could, could you send me a sample of your writs? And then you just change the name and send it in and think that's going to work. That's not going to work. You better be studying this info. Because if you're not studying this info... Trust you're going to be sorry. Excuse me if I can find a blank sheet here. I'm going to turn this stuff up. Damn, a minute. string or rubber band, something like that, I can tie this thing back. Yeah. If we can, yeah. Because it's trying to pull. Let's loop them together. It's mainly this. This is like it's bending. somebody say where are you from and you say here what does that mean what part of earth is here wherever you're standing at the particular time meaning that it's an illusion all right they're claiming in the court keep in mind when they're talking u.s citizenship they're not talking the land. They're talking corporate paperwork under the 14th Amendment. All things and all persons and corporate entities that are registered under the Naturalization Act, under anything statutory, 
which means by virtue of legislation, is 14th Amendment and is artificial. Are we clear? As distinguished from Jew sanguinous, which is the bloodline. Are we clear? So when they're talking 14th Amendment, they're talking Jew Soleil. When you're talking about nationalization, you're talking Jew sanguinous. This is your bloodline. This is pedigree. Your, this, this goes beyond legislation. Are we clear? Which means it can't be legislated. Are we clear? It can be recognized in law by legislation, but it can't be legislated. You must be very clear in your mind when we're, you hear these terms, right? The implication and this So this is clothed. Are we clear? And statutory. This re this requires this requires application tests. Are we clear? where this occurs in nature or by right of birth. The psalm says, can you see it? But status is everything. So bloodline versus what, what the Statutory. Got you. Because what they're the difficulty that most of our people have, even when they're starting to learn this stuff, and it's including with some people that are coming amongst our people trying to sell them packages for birthright, then they're violating... No, wasn't Moorish Consular Court people trying to sell you stuff? If this is the Consular General right here for the Moorish Consulate, how come he's telling you don't buy packages but the consulate court people are telling you buy a package which like the more said in the chat Moorish American travel document is a package that's not identification that's a package Nat and international law. Now, a person who doesn't know the rules can be subject to that. Now, in principle, when that which is unalienable is put on a commercial venue and then a command is made by a party in treaty to respect that, the, tr the truth may be there, but they're not obligated. I.e., like uh, taxes. Yeah, meaning that... I.e., like... Brother Truth selling you a package and then you're going to court and then you lose and then you can't get a refund because they sold you a package. They weren't dealing with nationality. And then all the Moors that support him, they're not dealing with nationality if they're supporting a package seller. When you're dealing with divine law, nature's law, from which civilized government draft constitutional principles, all things must be done in honor, irregardless of the economic status. 
meaning that you can be a small country or big country, what causes countries to give honor to other countries is the sovereignty of the honor of their mothers and fathers. You know, that bypasses finances. This is called unalienable or inalienable rights. They cannot be transferred nor sold to another. Governments are in place to secure and to protect them. They have no other thing to do. I mean that governments have this only, that is obligations and duties. When they can get trick people into agreeing to this, like 14th Amendment stuff, then it's licensed. Then it's something that can be given or taken because it's granted. It's a granted position. Are, are we clear? A privilege. It Which is why all these package selling people, what they do is they make the people fill out power of attorney. So they give the people they bought the package from power of attorney, which means that they signed away their rights. But now they got this paperwork that they bought talking about rights. You don't have no rights. You sold your rights to the guy who you bought the package from. And then stuff doesn't work. And then you want to come complain to the Kudrow. Oh, well, how do I deal with this court situation? Because I bought the paperwork over there from that guy and it's not working. And then now I know. And then when we tell you, well, in order to repair your damage, it's going to cost you 1500 Then you're mad. But you're not mad at a guy who cost, cost you ten grand. And it can be given or revoked at political will. Whereas this can't be taken. And so one of the things that is generally presented to our people when uh, citizenship conversations are presented uh, in order to deceive them out of this and get them into this so that they can regulate them as property, that's why they created the 14th Amendment, to create this mysticism right here, this gray line. Are we clear? Even though you could never be citizens of the one who conquered you, in order for them to project the false concept that you were freed of, of Christian domination under the Treaty of Verona and the doctrines of discovery. They created the 14th Amendment, closed the Freedman's Bureau, and created this Jusuli position to make our people think they were freed, right? And then make some of the European families think that they would be compensated for their property. Now, the Emancipation Proclamation, or what you call manumission, is not freedom. It's a transfer of property, meaning that the European families transferred their property, called Negroes, blacks and coloreds, or whatever they are this week, having their name, just like you do a dog, they transferred it to the Congress. Are we clear? So the Congress holds all the stock under the 14th Amendment. Are we clear? Now, so you have a bunch of people that don't know how this work and think, oh, I was born here. I'm free. <laughs> and this has been going on for quite a few generations. And that misinformation has been promoted by people that look just like me and you who know better. Are we clear? This is why 90% of them are taken to the mountaintop and told the truth about the land of the Moors. And in secret they wear a fez and then they take it off when they come out in public and give you a different philosophy teaching you Roman Catholicism under one of the protesting orders of the daughters. For rulership. Meaning that what they project to the masses, they themselves neither believe nor accept. Do you understand? However, the art is to convince you that they believe it. Are we clear? And the reason why this is important is because this is important for you to understand the politics, because you have to understand the politics and 
government and history in order to to remove the mysticism of what the Moorish movement is all about. Other than that, you'll start thinking it's just another Islamic sect competing with some of your belief systems, which is really not what it's about. It's the rest restoration of your inheritance, which cannot be done in law anywhere on the planet until you are actually and factually competent in the honor of your mothers and your fathers. So when certain pills who are Moors are with certain keys people who are telling you about black world order and if they're talking about black world order and black means pale and they're not telling you black means pale and they have the people chasing that thinking because these people bought a farm that means that they're competent they're not competent if they're saying black and applying that to dark-skinned people because black means pale and if you think black means dark-skinned people you're not competent if you think black and planet goes together and you're listening to some rap guy tell you of people fear a black planet. Ain't nobody fear the black planet. Because black means pale. And everybody knows the pale is the real minority, not the majority. Because that's where the law resides. And so when you hear the term of... You hear uh, even a lot of the European Freedmen's Group, and they're talking about common law, etc. I'll tell you where they're having their difficulty. And people loosely say common law because they know that means constitution treaty law. Automatic, right? And just saying that or going into what you would see, stare decisi, affirming common law, it does not stand as valid for you lest you can actually, by competence, trace yourself back to your what? Common customs in antiquity upon which the common law is based. That thus, the bloodline. Sanguinous is the bloodline. Thus, nobody talking about Noble Juali. Because you're not going to get anything in this life if you're not tied to your bloodline which Noble Juali is the only one who brought that back to us. No one else in the history of our people came out and told us that we're not these fictions, that we have a bloodline that goes back centuries, millennia, even off of this earth plane into the universal existence of beings. Ask the Dogon, who say they come from Sirius, and all the Dogon high priests wear fezes. As if, you know, they don't know that they're Moors. Because they call themselves Dogon. But they got fezes though. And they come from another planet. But you're not going to hear them. So when people just think because they're saying the common law. And they're talking trash about the colorable government. Because the gold act and the trading with the enemy act. And, you know, Woodrow Wilson selling the governments to the popes. And then, uh, uh, pardon me, um, Franklin Delano Roosevelt backing it up in 33, et cetera, which is what you're suffering right now. They figure, well, all they got to do is reject the fake U.S. corporation, and therefore they could claim that they are sovereign. But keep this in mind. All Europeans are immigrants. And this is another thing that you got to keep in mind. This is another reason why... Europeans keep the light on everybody else, challenging everybody else's nationality to keep your mind off of them, that they're the only immigrant. And everybody that they're talking about, from the Mexicans to the brothers in Haiti and the brothers in Borican, Dominica, Brazil, Colombia, Belize, etc., etc., are all Americans. And the only ones of fraud is the European. Are we clear? And when you 
don't have that in your mind and they're challenging you in any kind of legal proceeding relative to your rights or property, nine times out of ten, your concepts of how to approach your argument will be incorrect and will be coming mentally from a subordinate position. And keep in mind that language is 90% body. Language is not just the verbal oration. It is the body, it is the eyes, it is the aura, it is the energy that you project. And people who know society know that, keep, it, keep this in mind, people in government are trained in those truths. And so they look at you, not necessarily how you're looking at them. Do you understand? And plus you must remember they're all symboliographers. They're trained in symboliography. The art, and the cunning of drafting documents. That's part of why they belong to secret societies, because they must learn the rules of grammatication, history, true human society, how it evolved on the planet, cosmogony, cosmology, astrology, spiritual geometry, etc., etc. And so these are just, those are just a, a, a drop in a bucket of basic education, which is never given to the masses. So that's why the masses are always at a disadvantage. Do you understand? Because the masses think that because they can pronounce a word in a dictionary that therefore they know. When in truth, for instance, like if you see sangue, sangue, you already know that means blood, right? You see, so you must know etymology and to understand why certain things when it comes to law, biology, inheritance, etc., you'll go into Moorish Latin. Do you see? And then when you go into what you would call spiritual philosophies, you get into Sanskrit. And you got to keep in mind that when you go into the ancient cultures of the Moors, the Canaanites, and, and Moabites, we always spoke minimum about five languages. We've fallen so far away that most of the people look at Asiatic and African culture with the concept that uh, a language as you see today of a different, a particular country, that's not, what you see today is not normal. You may assume it is. Well, FY. FY. Grand Rising. Nobody was saying that before Shayla Moore Bay started saying Grand Rising. Keep in mind, he's an FBI informant. So, watch what you say. Especially around here. Because we look at people funny when they ride with traitors and agents and sellouts. It's, it's not normal. If you, meaning like if you go to any of the homes before European colonism, you had a library in your house the same way you have a kitchen. If that was part, man needs not buy bread alone. It, it is our culture Philology is Moorish culture. This is why when the popes were conquering the world, they spent over 300 years going to and fro to earth, burning literature to create this blackness that you think you are today. And people think it's an identity and it's a condition. So this movement is really to bring light on the real world to take you to unplug you from the matrix of falsehood but it is not to make you a follower it is to free you from that mentality of followership and give you the keys that the high priest have so that you can what be priest unto yourselves and that's the real truth um i want to read from the Mysteries of the Silent Brotherhood of the East. And this is as a reminder 
and most of you know this, but this is a reminder. The Council of the Seven of the World, in every age since time began, but seven sages lived. At first of every age, these sages meet to note the course of nations, peoples, tribes, and tongues, to note how far toward justice and love the race has gone, to formulate the code of law, religious postulates, and plans of rule best suited to the coming age. An age had passed, and lo, another age had come. The sages must convene. Now, Alexandria was the center of the world's best thought, and here in Philo's home, the sages met. From China came Mengster, from India, Vidyapati came. From Persia, Caspar came, and from Assyria, Ashbina came. From Greece, Apollo came. Atheno was the Egyptian sage, and Philo was the chief of Hebrew thought. The time was due. The council met and sat in silence seven days. Then next arose and said, the wheel of time has turned once more and the race is on a higher plane of thought. The garments that our fathers wore have given out. The cherubim have woven a celestial cloth, have placed it in our hands, and we must make for men new garbs. The sons of men are looking up for greater light, and no longer do they care for God's hewn out of wood. They seek for Allah not made with hands. They see the beams of coming days and yet comprehend them not. The time is ripe, and we must fashion well these garments for the race. And let us make for men new garbs of justice, mercy, and love that they may hide their nakedness when shines the light of the coming days. And Vidyapati said, our priests have all gone mad. They saw a demon in the wild, and at him cast their lamps, and they are all broken up, and not a gleam of light has any priest for men. The night is dark. The heart of India calls for light. The priesthood cannot be reformed. It is already dead. Its greatest needs are graves and funeral chants. The new age calls for liberty, the kind that makes each man a priest, enables him to go alone and lay his offerings on the shrine of Allah. And Kasper said, in Persia, people walk in fear. They do the good for fear to do the wrong. The devil is the greatest power in our land, and though a myth, he dandles on his knees both youth and age. Our land is dark, and evil prospers in the dark. Fear rides on every passing breeze and lurks in every form of life. The fear of evil is a myth, an illusion, and a snare but it will live until some mighty power shall come and raise the ethers to the plane of light. And when this shall come to pass, the Magian land will glory in the light, and the soul of Persia calls for light. It's the Book of the East, Adip, that's the second half of the Circle 7 Quran. And even some of the Grand Sikhs have it, don't even give it to Moors who've been in the temples for years. Why? Because the priesthood is dead, and they don't want them to know that. Get the point? Meaning all the priesthood know it. They're trying to preserve an institution that's not only dead, it's been sucking off the poor. And this is a reflection on why Yahshua, when he went down to the temples, turned over the tables of the money changers. That's the priesthood not some devil. The priesthood made the devil up to hide their corruption. And they got the world in dark ever since. And that's just to let you know what priesthood know, because that's the priest book. How come the masses don't get it? 
because they might free you from them, right? Hmm? All right, so let's talk some more about stateless person. Now, in law, across the planet, keep this in mind, and this is also why the nations of the earth came together in the General Assembly to deal with the rights of indigenous people, one of the major issues before the governments of the planet because of the constant wars and corruption that's taking place on the planet and uh, certain things must be set aright because we're bordering on mass destruction not only with the weaponry but because of the state of the mind of the people if we don't fix it we're going to uh, what you might say knock civilization back a couple more centuries if we don't fix this thing real good real quick it's why it was necessary for Obama to sign the rights of indigenous people when he came back from Egypt to remind you of your duties with each other to teach up each other about your right of nationality or your right of what sanguine status because the corporate states have you here which gives them jurisdiction and you must be removed from here this is artificial understand this is this was done with that 14th amendment artificially without your representation are we clear and then they'll say that you're a US citizen because you were born here now can anyone anyone and here a scholar or anyone knows any scholars that can produce for the record in in history in North America when there was a mass naturalization process for persons who were held to servitude I'm gonna repeat pay attention to what I'm saying because this is very important can anyone in, in this room or does anyone in this room know any scholars, Europeans, Asiatics, matters not, foreigners, etc., that can show for the record that when they closed the Freedman's Bureau, ETC, and started, well, when they actually, uh, how do you say, did the so-called Emancipation Proclamation, we talk about both sets, 62, 63, and, and 65, and the so-called Emancipation Proclamation, they closed the Freedman's Bureau in 68 and started, created the 14th Amendment, which was never properly ratified, which means it ain't law, met on a Saturday. Can anybody show on the record where they took people of Asiatic African descent on a mass scale and had a naturalization process? I notice no hands are raised is because that's what would be required for us to be in this 14th Amendment citizenry because it's statutory. And you would be required to both study Constitution law, international law, treaty law, be tested, and you'd be carrying a green card. But that's not part of the culture. That's not been in our communities, have it? Therefore, anybody amongst us who've ever told our people that they U.S. citizens are not only liars, they're frauds. And if you ever thought that you was a U.S. citizen, you was a fraud. It's not. In the mic, please. There's actually a more science temple in Baltimore called um, called uh, Temple Number Thirteen in Baltimore, and they actually go through that that Fourteenth Amendment naturalization process mm -hmm. and have people go from all over the world incorporating into that school to go through that naturalization now, process. Now that process is absolutely correct for aliens and foreigners. Exactly. Now, so the question, therefore, hold that for a second. The obvious question, particularly for anyone is conscious, right? 
if you know that you're standing on Morocco and that this is your land by birthright and you're Moorish American, can you come under the Statutory Nationalization Act or is that a birthright, which is up here? It's a birthright. So if it's a birthright, it cannot be converted into a privilege and you cannot be listed as an alien in your own land. Therefore, the process is a fraud. See? Which is why Farrakhan's a fraud. Because Farrakhan, Ali, naturalized with that same temple number 13 in Baltimore in the 80s. Because he went to go get money from Gaddafi and U.S. wasn't going to let him back in the country. So because U.S. wasn't going to let him back in the country, because U.S. wasn't going to let him back in the country, he had a meeting with the Moors in order to correct his status, which they teach if you're Negro black color, that means you're a foreigner, so you got to naturalize to be back into the fold of government and all that stuff, which Farrakhan did and got back into the country. Go ask him. Point. And it was once you teach people principles, they'll free themselves. They just need to be educated. This is why Jali gave the knowledge to us. And charged us, he says, look, he says, the half has not been told. If I told you everything, you'd go back to sleep. He says, I've given you more than enough to save yourselves. Now go out on my word and redeem your people. That's the charge. And he also said, in order to change the people, you must change their literature. And so everybody says they're grand chic. And anybody got Moorish American got a card in their pocket, if they haven't produced literature and they're carrying a title, they're a fraud. Oh, honest to Rise of the Moors Grand Sheik, Jamal Bey, he, he got literature. You go to their website, riseofthemoors.org. And honors to Grand Sheik Kujo Adwell, he got literature. You can go to khalifamedia.com and go get, go get his stuff. Honest to Grand Sheik Nature L. Bey, who's a Grand Sheik. You go to moorishtrucking.com and you go get his books. Honors to Grand Sheik Taj Shri Bay. Honors to Grand Sheik Raz Mariah Bay. And Sheik S and all that stuff. Everybody Sheik's out here. Honors to all the Moors who did something with regard to changing these people's mindset by producing literature. Because if they're not producing literature, and they call themselves head of something. If they call themselves head of something. And they have not produced literature. They are a fraud. Capital F. Fraud. This thing's probably going to stop in two minutes. So I'm going to pause right here and get back on.